Hello everyone, my name is Alexandra Pisano. I'm a graduate student at the University of Minnesota Duluth conducting my master's research in collaboration with Hawkridge Bird Observatory. The subject of my research is determining subspecies origins of Darkmoor fred-tailed hawks migrating through Minnesota. Darkmoor fred-tailed hawks in the east are very rare. They've been a subject of interest for a long time amongst ornithologists and raptor biologists and we're excited to finally provide some scientific information regarding their geographic and phylogenetic origins. The red-tailed hawk, Budio jamaicensis, is one of North America's most widespread birds of prey, their range spanning almost the entirety of the continent throughout the year. They are generally found in open woodland habitats, but they use a variety of ecosystems, from boreal forest to deserts and scrublands, mixed deciduous forests, and grasslands and fields. Currently, there are 12 North American subspecies of red-tailed hawk recognized by Preston and Bean, seven of which breed in the contiguous United States. For my research, we are specifically interested in B.J. Chloris, also known as the Western Red-Tailed Hawk, and B.J. Borealis, known as the Eastern Red-Tailed Hawk. These two subspecies ranges abut one another and occupy the majority of the Red-Tailed Hawk range. Chloris's range spans from the Rocky Mountains and extends to the Pacific Northwest and Western Canada. Borealis's range extends eastward from the Rocky Mountains to the Atlantic Ocean. Like other species of Budio, Red-tailed hawks exhibit polymorphism, or the presence of multiple color morphs and ventral coloration. Red-tails exhibit three color morphs, light, intermediate, also known as rufous, and dark. For the purposes of this project, I will only be referencing light and dark morphs. Light morphs are typically lighter in color and less heavily marked, whereas dark morphs have completely dark ventral coloration. What's interesting about red-tailed hawks is that polymorphism varies across their subspecies. The western subspecies of red-tailed hawk, B.J. coloris, occurs in both light and dark morphs, whereas based on the current state of knowledge, the eastern subspecies of red-tailed hawk, B.J. borealis, occurs only in the light morph. One of the best hubs for fall red-tailed migration in Minnesota is Hawkridge Bird Observatory, located along the shore of Lake Superior in Duluth. Official counting and banding efforts have taken place here for almost 50 years, amounting in a wealthy data set and an innumerable number of birds seen and captured. On average, 6,302 red-tailed hawks are counted every fall, the highest count for one season being 15,358. In total, about 1,400 red tails have been banded since 2011. The majority of these birds are light morphs, with about 1-2% being dark morphs. The subspecies of light morphs caught include Borealis and B.J. abeticola, which I will talk more about later in this presentation. On rare occasion, other subspecies such as Harlan's red-tailed hawks and Crider's red-tailed hawks have been observed and caught. It's important to note that light morph chloris birds have never been observed by the researchers at Hawk Ridge. So this brings us to our research question. What are the subspecies origins of the dark morph birds migrating through Minnesota? If Minnesota is primarily, if not completely, in the Borealis geographic range, and Borealis is only known to occur in a light morph. Why are dark morph birds being observed and documented in Minnesota during fall migration? An example of this is presented in the right-hand picture, which features an adult dark morph red-tailed hawk captured at Hawk Ridge and documented on eBird in 2016. As I mentioned earlier, about 1-2% of red-tailed hawks migrating through Duluth are dark morphs. On some occasions, the dark morph birds observed migrating through Minnesota are harlands, which are known to be polymorphic like the chlora subspecies. However, when these dark morphs aren't obviously of the harlands group, which subspecies are they from? According to Ligorian Sullivan, several theories have been posed. The first of those being that these dark morph birds are chloris birds moving beyond their primary geographic range. The second being that they are borealis birds, suggesting the idea that borealis birds could be a polymorphic and occur rarely as dark morphs. 
the third being that they are integrates or hybrids of Caloris and Borealis. And the last being that they are sourced from a forgotten alternative, BJ beta which I'd like to talk about in more detail. BJ beta also known as the northern red-tailed hawk, is named based on its occurrence in the northern boreal forests, in which its breeding range overlaps heavily with balsam firs. The breeding range of a beta is also currently recognized as the northern breeding range of the eastern subspecies, Borealis. A beta was first described as a subspecies by W. E. Clyde Todd in 1950. However, there's always been much debate among ornithological authorities regarding whether or not a beta should be considered an official subspecies of red-tailed hawk. Currently, it's not a recognized subspecies by the American Ornithological Society, and its genetic relatedness to recognized subspecies has yet to be determined. At the very least, a beta is a diagnosable red-tailed hawk phenotype. Compared to Borealis birds, a beta are much more heavily marked. Hawkridge Bird Observatory Banding Director Frank Nicoletti describes about 60% of the light morph red tails moving through Duluth as a beta Currently, there's no scientific evidence proving dark morphs occur in beta populations, but experts believe it's possible based on various observations. So, in order to answer our question and hypothesize which subspecies could be the source of the dark morph birds migrating through Minnesota, we have to consider which subspecies are being documented in the breeding ranges north of Minnesota. First of all, while we do have Borealis birds documented during fall migration, at least here in Duluth, we know the majority of them come through in the early fall as a result of post-breeding season dispersal. Furthermore, the dark morph birds observed at Hawk Ridge tend not to move through until later in the fall, indicating they're coming from further north. This leads us to believe that dark morph birds are most likely not of Borealis origin. Second, there's a lack of evidence for light morph Caloris birds breeding and wintering east of the Rockies. If these dark morph birds were Caloris, we would see dozens of light morph Caloris birds to one dark morph Caloris bird on the wintering grounds east of the Rockies, and that has yet to be the case. This leads us to believe that dark morph birds are not Caloris. Lastly, the majority of light morph red-tailed hawks moving along the shore of Lake Superior through Duluth are described as a beta We hypothesize the dark morph birds migrating through Minnesota most likely originate from the informal northern subspecies of red-tailed hawk. Despite having these rationales for our hypothesis, it's important to acknowledge that there is currently no formal evidence proving dark morphs occur in a beta nor are there distinct plumage characteristics that can distinguish dark abeticola from dark coloris. So, being able to provide evidence would be groundbreaking in the field of raptor biology. In order to answer our question, we are collecting a large variety of data from all migratory red-tailed hawks captured at Hawk Ridge Bird Observatory. Our primary goal will be to compare phenotypic data and genotypic data of the migratory dark morph birds to reference breeding populations of both color morphs and various subspecies from across the country. My first field season for data collection is still taking place, but slowly winding down. So far, we've captured and sampled 83 red-tailed hawks, 81 of those being light morphs and two of them being dark morphs. The first type of phenotypic data we are collecting includes various morphological measurements. In addition to the mass, wing cord, and tail length data the Hawk Ridge Banding Program collects, I also collected unfeathered tarsus length, scoot density, common length, and halix length. Our second form of phenotypic data we are collecting includes plumage photos. Each photo shoot included ventral and dorsal wing out shots, a head profile shot, a tail spread shot, and close-ups of upper and under tail coverts, which aren't pictured here. For our genotypic data, we are collecting blood samples from every bird. The DNA from a blood sample will be sequenced and then, using specific molecular markers, will be compared to reference breeding populations. This will hopefully provide us evidence on which subspecies each individual is more closely related to. Lastly, we are deploying four satellite transmitters on adult red-tailed hawks in order to determine where they're breeding. We are targeting two dark morphs and two light morph abeticolas. So far, we've deployed one transmitter on a light morph abeticola bird.
The next step for this project include deploying our remaining satellite transmitters, collecting data from more dark morphs, sequencing our data, performing comparisons of phenotypic and genotypic data from our migratory sample size and reference breeding populations in order to determine the subspecies origins of dark morphs migrating through Minnesota. And finally, we also want to be able to answer other questions, such as genetic relatedness of the beta birds we sampled to other subspecies like Borealis and Coloris. I'd like to end by acknowledging and thanking those who have played a big role in brainstorming this project, getting it off the ground, and keeping it moving. I'd especially like to thank Frank Nicoletti and Jerry Ligori for laying the foundation of the project we're conducting here in Minnesota, and trusting and believing in me to take it on for my master's research. I'd also like to thank the Minnesota Ornithologist Union for granting me funding for this project and the opportunity to present to you all. And finally, everyone else behind the scenes that has helped me collect data every day, push for donations, and share their support. And of course, thanks to the birds.